नेक्स्ट क्लाइंट ओह क्या मस्त मकान है सर आप ब्रोकर हो हाँ ओह इस मकान का प्राइस क्या होगा ये मकान सात करोड़ रुपए का है सात करोड़ हाँ और रेंट पे मिलेगा क्या ए, क्या गरीब जैसा बात करता है तेरे को पता है अमीर लोग कैसे अमीर बनते हैं ऐसे वाला घर खरीदते हैं लोग सच्ची सारे अमीर लोग घर खरीदते हैं नो आई रेंट हाउस We have always heard that the basic necessities that a person yearns for are roti, kapda, and makan. But what if I told you that you might never be able to own a makan or a house of your dreams in this lifetime? No, I don't mean to scare you, but the data I'm about to share with you shows the scary situation of the housing market in our country. So, my husband Varun and I have had the dream of building a house together for the longest time. So the course of last few months we explored the length and breadth of Bangalore to find the right property. We truly faced the brunt of the housing market first hand. High prices, legal issues, black money. There is a lot going wrong with the housing sector and there was lots that I also actually learned from this whole process of finding and purchasing a property. My name is Achina Maya and in this video I will tell you why owning a house in India is a big challenge and what is actually cooking in the residential housing space in our country. So, one of the first things to understand is that the price of each and everything in a market is determined by its factors of supply and demand as per the basic rules of economics. So, if the demand is way higher than the supply, the price of a particular asset or commodity keeps on increasing as we know. And this is one of the reasons why property prices in India are continuing to rise. See cities are essentially the epicenter of the majority of the financial activity right so large populations flock to cities in search of better opportunities better jobs and that is why if you look at the majority of the cities across the world they are all very densely populated they all have tall skyscraper buildings to accommodate all of its people in fact by letting buildings grow tall Manhattan has increased its size by almost two additional Manhattans. It's an amazing way of making more land out of thin air, right? But have you wondered why Indian cities are not as tall and don't have skyscrapers? Like you can literally count the number of skyscrapers in India. Let's look at Bombay. It's a peninsula city that means it's surrounded by water on three sides. So there's not much scope to expand outwards horizontally. The city should ideally expand vertically. Sounds like a legible solution. Then why do you think it doesn't have skyscrapers? It is because Indian cities have some of the most restrictive land use constraints in the world. The problem is something called the FSI or floor space index which is used to regulate the maximum amount of floor space that can be built on a particular plot of land. If you take a 10,000 square foot plot with an FSI of 2, you can construct a building with total floor space of 20,000 that's 10,000 into 2 so you can either make two floors of 10,000 square foot each or you can build four floors of 5,000 square foot the average fsi of mumbai is 1.3 compare that to the fsi of shanghai or new york which goes up to 25 so in a city like shanghai a person can build 25 10,000 square foot floors whereas in mumbai he can probably build like two the instinct to cap fsi is based on a fallacy that policy makers can limit the number of people in an area by limiting the amount of floor space but reality proves otherwise as cities such as mumbai and bangalore created jobs people were willing to cram into less and less space to access these work opportunities let me tell you a crazy fact the average floor space per person in mumbai is about 48 square feet and just as a comparison the us federal government mandates that you have to have at least 50 square feet per person in prison cells so you will probably have more space in a us prison versus in mumbai sir i want to build a jail here sir my who mba jay wala because of the humanity and the human rights and the dignity and the serenity today The square feet needs to be at least fifty per person. Fifty. Meanwhile, hey, thamre. Four by four ka room hai. Two crore baake ka. Pehne ka to leo. Toh nikalo. 
मस्ते हाँ भाई बोल चल 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 हाँ दूसरा वाला माल ले ले the second problem that we realized during our quest to find the right property was that there's a very evident power law in the real estate sector it's these top few entities that control the majority of the inventory and it's a pure sellers market and they have all the leverage so we were exploring different areas to understand how have these property prices essentially appreciated and we realized that there's usually two paths to this phenomena let's say a new place comes up near the airport so what happens is in the beginning this property is allotted by the government or bda and anybody buys it people are even given incentives to purchase this land so most of the people who get property initially will flip it around for a quick profit of 10 to 20% cuz no one really wants to live there since it's still a developing area eventually builders come to these areas and start building housing builders and people who are willing to take a bit of risk on the location then the area slowly starts getting developed and more and more people come there either to live or buy the property as an investment so what happens is in the beginning there's a lot of flipping activity until the property eventually reaches a person who's either going to live there which means that story is finished he's probably not going to sell it for the next 10 years or it goes in the hand of a person who has like 10 properties who's a collector like these real estate dons right who sit on large portfolio of properties now properties are not fungible the value of one property which is centrally located is very different from the value of property on the outskirts so think of it like nfts or non fungible tokens initially when a nft project happens a lot of flippers are there people mint their nfts and then flip it around for small profits till it eventually goes in the hands of the collectors and these collectors rarely sell unless they get a crazy offer what happens with properties also is that they land up in the hands of people who are either using the property as their home or are collectors who are just going to sit on it as time goes by majority of these properties in the area are sold and reach their final buyers and this is when the second inflection point happens and property prices start going up because there's no liquidity in that area and nobody is selling their property anymore even if you give them 5% over market price they'll be like i don't need the money so i'll only sell it when someone gives me a really really good offer this is how the majority of the power lies in the hands of the sellers and it's not like the share market where everyone can trade with each other these are all one to one transactions so i can hide information and there's absolutely no transparency in this market so we were evaluating two plots of land ages into each other and one of the sellers was willing to give it to us for 4.5 crore and the other one was willing to give it to us for 5.2 crores even though there was no difference in the property so from our experience what we realized was that the best time to buy a property is either when the area is underdeveloped and you take a bit of a risk on the area so you're paying lesser for the property or when someone is doing a fire sale and requires the money so you have some leverage and can dictate your terms to an extent also one more takeaway from the process was to always get your property papers checked by lawyers or take a loan because that way the banks are checking the property papers on your behalf to make sure there are no legal issues and taking a loan also gives you some tax benefits now let's address the most known problem and probably the one which is hardest to solve black money so when we met our first potential property seller we had a very strange conversation where the guy was like i have two prices for you for the same plot of land One is twenty thousand per square foot, and one is eighteen thousand per square foot. All depends on how you pay. By the way, this was almost a difference of sixty lakh rupees. I was like, "What do you mean?" And we were sitting in a restaurant in a public place, so obviously he was apprehensive to say the word "black money." So he was just make these strange expressions and going, "Understand, madam." We just walked off, but realized that this practice is so common in the market. In fact, a lot of people with black money use property investments as a wall for their own black money because the builders are also more than happy to take payments in black. तू ना एक काम कर, 50% बैंक अकाउंट ट्रांसफर कर, दूसरा 50% दूसरा वाला पैसा दे। अरे अल्टरनेटिव मनी। अरे सफेद का उल्टा अरे काला धन ब्लैक मनी ए, 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 क्या क्या रे काला धन लेगा ये टाकरे वाला आत्मा दे चल
चल चलो चल पर मेरा टू बी एच के This black money is also the reason for artificial inflation of properties. This artificial appreciation in real estate prices is caused by a nexus between builders and brokers. So what these builders do is they offload their stock to the brokers and let them control the marketing of the project and its price point. These brokers create artificial demand and the builder also keeps on increasing prices based on the artificial demand. Eventually, the broker sells the stock to the end user at a discount to the builder's price. The premium charged by the broker is usually paid in cash by the buyers and this leads to a circle wherein the unaccounted income or this cash component, basically black money, is flushed back into the real market. These brokers make huge profits through this difference between the price of the project at its launch and the artificially inflated price. Home seekers also living under the illusion of property prices appreciating fall prey to this discounted price and gullible buyers believe that there'll be a further increase in prices whereas the end users who purchase the units at the time of the project's launch hardly find a market to exit at that level. Bhaiya, uh idhar ka ye dam kya hoga? Bankrupt. Main 1 crore mein dunga sir. Theek hai. फिर अब मैं कला की डील फाइनलाइज करता हूं नेक्स्ट डे हो चलो डील फाइनलाइज करें चार करोड़ लगेगा साहब चार करोड़ नहीं पांच करोड़ पांच करोड़ पांच करोड़ लगेगा साहब Let's come to the last point which is rather paradoxical in nature. Before that, I want to share one more piece of information with you. 77% of our viewers who watch our video do not hit the subscribe button. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later. So do give us a try and we promise we will help you learn a lot. Now back to housing. India had 11.1 million vacant housing units in 2011 comprising 12.4 of its urban housing stock and as of today there are 7 lakh apartments that have been constructed but remain unsold in India so on one side we have an acute housing shortage of 18.8 million units and on the other side we have ghost towns where these constructed buildings are just lying empty absurd right now we have gone over multiple issues with the housing industry there is lots to be fixed but what is the solution and what can be done to improve this housing crisis the bigger question rather should you even consider buying a house in india to address all these questions we spoke to nikhil kamath the founder of zeroda who provided us with some incredible solutions well i'll tell you this insight from uh, a top down perspective Uh, I know a lot of real estate developers, right? Like the biggest ones in the country. There is so much hubris in the industry, wherein uh, each time I ask them why land A or apartment B is as expensive as it is, and uh, the general uh, reasoning that comes to me is land is finite, and the number of people will continue to grow up, go up, but land will not. Uh, I think that's changing quickly in India. Uh, the demographics of India, uh, we might have gone from a fertility rate which is as high as four to, I don't know, maybe it's two point three, two point four today. Replenishment is at two point one. So when we go below that, population will start to flatten. We'll have an aging population problem. But when you look forward sixty, seventy years down the line, we will definitely have a smaller population than we have today. If you're willing to drive out one hour, and you know if there's new development which is going to happen, land essentially is infinite for a country as large as India. So you're saying as long as we build community, as in like we start building the stores and the you know uh, plumbing infrastructure everywhere, could be you know yeah. a place we can yeah. create civilization. Yeah. But if there's so much inventory, why don't people sell? Especially if it's investment property. Mm-hmm. Well, again, many reasons. I think. Uh, India one thing we have to change is increase property taxes a lot of uh, money invariably uh, finds itself into real estate and gets parked there maybe money not uh, not totally legitimate a good solution in India to bring down the wealth divide problem which has become uh, like so acute that it's it's in all our faces now right and this is only going to increase with time is to tax properties uh, 
at a significantly higher uh, price point than we might be doing now and to tax them in an increasing order. And if you had to pay 1% of the value of your property every year, you yeah. would then either try to figure out a way to monetize it, you would either sell it or you would live in it, I think. Yeah. Do you feel there's going to be a crash in the horizon? Well, it's impossible to predict uh, you know any asset class right uh, but if you were to ask me in the environment today if uh, inflation is 7-8% and uh, rental yields residential in India are about 2-3% uh, in the current scenario I don't see uh, logically why it makes sense to buy a house over renting a house the house I, I live in I pay maybe 2.5% of the property's value as rent. Uh, in the three years that I've lived there, housing prices have not really appreciated. Mm. Uh, I was looking at some apartments in another city, uh, in Bombay recently. In many cases, there were apartments which people had bought six, seven years ago, uh, still valued the same that they were then. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they've not found a tenant in so long and they're willing to lend, again rent it the 2-3%. Yeah. Uh, so that's something I faced myself and hence I choose to rent.